إِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ لَا تُخْرِجُوهُنَّ مِنْ بُيُوتِهِنَّ وَلَا يَخْرُجْنَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِينَ بِفَاحِشَةٍ مُبَيِّنَةٍ وتلك حدود الله ومن يتعد حدود الله فقد ظلم نفسه لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا فإذا بلغن أجلهن فأمسكوهن بمعروف أو فارقوهن بمعروف وأشهدوا ذوى عدل منكم وأقيموا الشهادة لله ذلكم يوعظ به من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه إن الله بالغ أمره قد جعل الله لكل شيء قدرا واللائي يئسن من المحيض من نسائكم إن ارتبتم فعدتهن ثلاثة أشهر واللائي لم يحضن وأولاة الأحمال أجلهن أن يضعن حملهن ومن يتق الله يجعل له من أمره يسرا ذلك أمر الله أنزله إليكم ومن يتق اتق الله يكفر عنه سيئاته ويعظم له أجرا أسكنوهن من حيث سكنتم من وجدكم ولا تضاروهن لتضيقوا عليهن وَإِن كُنَّ أُولَاتِ حَمْلٍ فَأَنْفِقُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ حَتَّى حَتَّى يَضَعْنَ حَمْلَهُنَّ فَإِنْ أَرْضَعْنَ لَكُمْ فَآتُوهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ وَأْتَمِرُوا بَيْنَكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ وَإِنْ تَعَاسَرْتُمْ فَسَتُرْضِعُ لَهُ أُخْرَى لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِّنْ سَعَتِهِ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهِ لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها سيجعل الله بعد عسر يسرا وكأي من قرية عتت عن أمر ربها ورسله فحاسبناها فحاسبناها حسابا شديدا وعذبناها عذابا نكرا فذاقت وبال أمرها وكان عاقبة أمرها خسرا أعد الله لهم عذابا شديدا 
فاتقوا الله يا أولي الألباب الذين آمنوا قد أنزل الله إليكم ذكرا رسولا يتلو عليكم آيات الله مبينات ليخرج الذين آمنوا ليخرج الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات من الظلمات إلى النور ومن يؤمن بالله ويعمل صالحا يدخله جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا قد أحسن الله له رزقا الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا As we discussed last class just to inshallah summarize and recap because this is a very important topic there's an entire surah in the Quran called At-Talaq the divorce or the separation or the dissolution or the dissolving of marriage now this is interesting because there is no surah that is called nikah. There's no surah that is called, um, you know, many other social contracts. There's not a surah for them, but there is a contract for the dissolution of marriage because it is very important and it needs to be done well. It needs to be done well. And the fact that there's a surah in the Quran named after the topic highlights the importance of the issue and the importance of discussing it critically. That's one. Two. A lot of the scholars, especially the commentators that are in the contemporary phase, they say this surah has taken the Arab community from a patriarchal society to a Muslim society. The surah indicates a transition of the Arab community, which was very patriarchal in nature, to a Muslim-based social system. A system in which there is equity in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A system in which there is accountability, but at the same time, the woman is honored. And you look at many other traditions, even the name for divorce, right? In many other traditions, it literally means to extract or to, uh, to, to remove. But the Arabic word that is used and the Arabic word that is used in the Quran, talaq, means to let something go, to let someone go. Just like you're holding on to them, you still care for them, you're still concerned about them, but for some reason or another, you have to let them go. And the language itself is, again, very interesting to note. These are important points to think about. The next point to think about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu. And we said that this is a command to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it extends to every other believer. And the fact that it's speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam itself goes to show you how important this is that Allah is addressing the Prophet ﷺ so that he can clarify and address to the community you know imagine when there's something that is very very important and requires a lot of elaboration and lived experience you don't imagine there's a supervisor or a superintendent that comes and what the supervisor or the superintendent does when they're trying to make a point but this point requires a lot of elaboration and clarification they will not give the point directly to the you know the operations team they'll give it to the person in charge so that they receive the full training and then they're able to explain so that is one of the interpretations of why the prophet ﷺ is being addressed here that this requires a lot of elaboration and clarification so the onus is given to the prophet ﷺ so that he can explain others say that the prophet ﷺ was given this because he himself was going through a divorce as we mentioned, he divorced Hafsa, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to see a dream or a vision in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
or the command came from Jibreel that this is a woman who prays the night, fasts the day, and she's close to Allah and she's your companion in Jannah, so take her back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger took her back. And there's a lot to learn from there. It goes to show you that the best of people, the Prophet ﷺ himself, went through divorce. And that means that we need to what? We need to remove the stigma associated with divorce. It can happen to the best of people. It doesn't mean that either is bad. It doesn't mean that either is tainted. It just means that they are like Umar ibn Khattab. He saw two people happy in their honeymoon phase. And they, the guy was saying, oh my God, she's perfect. He, you know, he's perfect. And what did he say? Umar was very clear and transparent. He says, you're not perfect. You're not perfect. But your imperfections are compatible. You're a human being. You're a human being. You're full of imperfections. It's just that Allah has allowed you to find someone whose imperfections are, com are compatible with your imperfections. So divorce can happen to the best of us. We should not have that stigma. As a matter of fact, the Prophet ﷺ married. Most of the wives that he had were either previously divorced or previously widowed. The only person that was never married was Aisha radiallahu anha. Abu Bakr himself, some of the narrations say, or Umar himself went through divorce. Ali ibn Abi Talib went through divorce. Abdurrahman ibn Auf went through divorce. And many of the companions that we hold to be dear and respected went through divorce. Does that mean we normalize the divorce and we open the doors for divorce? No, because you see the surah, it shuts the doors for divorce by making it very, very uh, natural to stay married and to look for reasons to be married. But at the same time, to keep the door open so that when there is a difficult, toxic, horrible situation that you're in that is withholding you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or limiting or preventing certain aspects of uh, necessities in your life, then it becomes an option and then and only then should it be explored. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, nisa, When and if you divorce, you let go of your women, then make sure that you have the waiting period. Make sure that you have the waiting period and calculate it. Write down the date. A lot of people forget. You know, this is very important. Even though we are a community at the very beginning, we have an oral tradition. The companions were taught to still use in the oral tradition to make sure that they note things. So now we don't have an oral tradition anymore. Our memory is not as strong as it used to be because we rely a lot on writing and other mechanisms. So we use whatever we have to make sure that we remember the date, the date of the, the, the marriage, the date of the divorce. These things are important. The cycles are important because there are rules that will become, again, relevant to the calculation. You know, there's a weak hadith, but the meaning is still valid. If two people borrow from each other or one person, let's say, for example, I take money from you as a loan and I don't write the contract, I don't write the agreements, I don't write the conditions, then later on when I'm asking for my money back and you're not giving it to me, I can't make dua against you because I've not done my best to make sure and you've not done my, you're, you're the one that's giving me the money. If you're asking for your money back and we did not write things down, then you have no right to make dua against me because you did not do your part in writing things down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this very clear. The longest ayah in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا تَدَيَنْتُمْ بِدَيْنٍ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّنْ فَاكْتُبُوهُ وَلْيَكْتُبْ بَيْنَكُمْ كَاتِبٌ بِالْعَدْلِ وَلَا يَأْبَ كَاتِبٌ يَكْتُبْ كَمَا عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهِ فَلْيَكْتُبْ وَلْيُمْلِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ الْحَقِّ وَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهُ وَلَا يَبْخَصْ مِنُهُ شَيْءٍ All of these uh, conditions that Allah makes, write it down, write it down, write it down, bring two witnesses. And if one cannot write, bring somebody that can write. Allah makes it very clear that it should be written down and by extension, any other contract, including a marriage contract in this day and in this space. And also, it is a dissolution contract. We'll use that word, a dissolution contract between husband and wife. It should also be written down and it should be counted. Then Allah makes it clear. لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجنا. Now, why does Allah say, do not remove them or ask them to leave their homes, nor should they leave their homes? So the man cannot tell his wife. Imagine you and your husband or you and your wife, you're going through some difficulties. You decided to try everything. We talked about this last time. The escalation plan. You try to work it out. Then you separated intimately. You're no longer sharing the same bed. Someone is sleeping on the couch. Someone is sleeping other way, other, uh, in another area. Then you try to get counseling or you try to get family involved. You've tried all of these options and it's still not working. 
right? Or you've tried everything between yourselves before you get the families involved after getting some professional counseling. It's still not working. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is a time in which you do what? You divorce. But before you leave the house, you stay three waiting periods, three cycles, right? Until you're pure from each and every one of those cycles for a sister, right? You wait for the first cycle, then you get pure. You wait for the second cycle, you get pure. You wait for the Third cycle, I'm talking about physical purity, not spiritual purity. Every woman is, of course, always spiritually pure. So you wait until physical purity, three cycles, and then, and only then, after the three cycles end, and this purity after the third cycle, can she leave the house? And we ask the question of why does she wait three waiting periods? Because this is a time in which you are supposed to, again, Allah has given us out of wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity to mend things in those three months. That if any of those times a husband and a wife become intimate, the waiting period is over and your husband and wife again. The divorce counts, but your husband and wife again. If you start becoming emotionally attached, then, what, then it, 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 it creates the opportunities for reconciliation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, before you leave the house, before you ask her to leave the house, stay together under the same roof for three months. Work out your agreements, work out your... Your, your contracts, work out your differences, work out if you're going to go with the divorce, work out your arrangements. How are you going to split the car, split this, split the assets so it doesn't get ugly, there's no reason for it to get to court. You work those things amongst yourselves or subhanAllah the Shafi'i say, Imam Shafi'i used to say, and during the waiting period, it is highly encouraged for her to still dress up. So she's still dressing up the way that a woman does for her husband. She's still making herself available, right? And subhanAllah, if they become intimate, again, it means what? It means they're still, and it can be forced intimacy. It has to be kind of, you know, somewhat, yani, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not exploitative intimacy. It's not, uh, it's not physical forcing of that kind. It's agreed upon. It's mutual. Then there's hope. Then there's still uh, chemistry. There's still love. There's still seeds of affinity. Then there's still hope for it to work out. But if after staying in the same roof, under the same roof for three cycles, and you're still not able to see eye to eye, that means what? That means it's time to move on and it's time to separate. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that she should not leave, nor should she be asked to leave. Unless she comes up or unless he comes up with something that is what? A clear, a clear what? A clear, uh, a clear act of, um, a clear act of, um, dis like an act of disgust, a disgusting act, a vivid act uh, that is repulsive. So what is that? Uh, some of the scholars say it, it's infidelity. So if there's infidelity, right away, you know, uh, the person leaves. There's no room for negotiation here, right? Because within a marriage, if there's infidelity, it's a, it's one of the major sins, right? The other thing is if there's very, very, uh, Shafi'is, for example, they say very, very vulgar language, like language that is very disrespectful and breaks the person. And by extension, emotional disrespect that is not that is not reparable, that is not reparable. Like words that are said and consistently said that create no room for reconciliation. Like how do you expect to say these things to your wife or to your husband and then for things to work out? So if it gets ugly physically or emotionally or verbally, then that can be categorized under fahisha. However, some say that only if it gets physical in terms of infidelity or physical in terms of violence should there be separation right away if there's somebody's life that is at risk there should be separation otherwise they should try to work it out at least are the boundaries that allah has set and if you transgress these boundaries you've wronged yourself you don't know perhaps allah will allow for something diff different to come out of it today you don't have the affinity today you don't have the uh, understanding you're not on the same page but tomorrow you could you could and then Allah gives us a beautiful beautiful ayah when they reach their you know as they're reaching as they're reaching the waiting period ending then either hold on with what is good or separate with what is best separate with what is good as well and make sure that you have Witnesses from among you that are trustworthy to witness the dissolution. And do so for the sake of Allah. This is the advice that is given from Allah to those who believe in Him and in the final day 
ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا and whoever has taqwa of Allah Allah will give him or her a way out we talked about taqwa meaning to protect the boundaries that Allah has set and in doing so you protect yourself protecting the boundaries to protect yourself and then Allah is reminding us if you have that taqwa if you protect the boundaries of Allah if you're constantly monitoring yourself you're engaging in self monitoring self accountability then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a way out some of us feel locked in the marriage. Oh, I can't get out. I'm financially this, I'm that. We gave many examples last week. But Allah is saying, Allah will give you a way out. Allah will give you a way out. Right? Uh, you could be struggling. Oh, how am I going to take care of the kids? How am I going to pay for the Islamic schooling? If it is a, for example, your, your husband is drinking, your husband is um, uh, abusive, your husband is physically abusive, vulgar, and that is impacting you in a negative way, then that is a time to really consider leaving because now it's impacting your children. And you shouldn't be locked in that marriage worried about the well-being of the children or the well-being of this. Allah is saying plan wisely, but know that Allah, if you do this for the sake of Allah and you do this to protect your well-being spiritually and your family's well-being spiritually, Allah will find you a way out. And Allah will give you from where you least expect. Now it's interesting to note here, the Prophet says, if somebody asks for divorce or dissolution of the marriage, Without a reason, that person is cursed by the angels. So meaning when you got into a marriage contract and things, there's no reason to divorce. There's no reason to divorce. It's like, oh, you know what? I just want to, ch- I just need some time to explore myself. Or, yeah, you know, I got married young. I don't know if I did the right thing. I know there's nothing really wrong with you, but it's just not, I'm not feeling it anymore. That attitude, but what's wrong? Like what exactly is wrong? So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here that we should also be very, very firm upon Shutting the doors for unnecessary dissolution. Unnecessary dissolution. Because you took an oath in front of Allah. This is the biggest, firmest oath that you take in front of Allah. The biggest promise you ever give to another human being. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds That even if you leave, do not forget the honor that you had between you. Do not forget the good moments that you shared between you. Don't forget the good days that you shared between you. And I've mentioned the examples of how some people, they become very bitter after divorce or they become very bitter during the separation. Like, I, I don't know you, your family is this, you're disgusting, I've never liked you anyway, you, you stink, you, the, very bad language. And this is actually, I'm, I'm saying nice things compared to what's actually being said, right? You're the reason that the ummah is, uh, you know, if there's the jal, it would be you, all this stuff. Yeah, you're the antichrist, I see it in their forehead, uh, all this stuff, right? Uh, you, your mother never raised you uh, all this stuff so it does not it does not rain in yourself and I mentioned this before many many times it is easy to be good to the people who are good to you true character manifests when you go through hardship when people are difficult to you especially those who are closest to you that is when you manifest and like incense like you know good smell imagine like uh, you know the oud when you burn it, the more stress that you add to it, the better the fragrance. Similarly with the believer, the stronger life you know, pushes you down, the more collected and calm that you are because you know that difficult things happen to good people so that they're made better. To be purified, to be elevated, to be honored. And Allah tests those whom he loves the most. So you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing the best that I can. This is what's going on. This is my test, my nasib. I will work through it and I will manifest the best and I ask Allah to allow me to embody excellence. Right? Jannah is not cheap. I'm hazibitum and tadkhulu al-jannah. Walamma yatikum mathalu al-lazina khalaw min qablikum massatum al-ba'sa wa al-dharra wa zulzilu hatta yaqul al-rasul al-lazina amanu ma'ahu mata nasrullah ala inna nasrullah qareeb. Do you think you're going to be allowed to enter jannah without being punished or without being uh, tested? Like the people before you were tested to a point where they were tested with such difficulties that they had to cry out, when is the help of Allah coming? Even some of the messengers reach the point, Ya Allah, I, I need your help. This is the time I need you to intervene. And then the response comes, Indeed, the Nasr of Allah is near. The Nasr of Allah is near. And it's important to remind my brothers and my sisters again, when we talk about divorce, when we talk about separation or dissolution, we also need to talk about why marriage is important. And subhanAllah, the words that Allah uses in the Quran, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the dua that we make, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, give us the best of the world. And the best of the hereafter, what does Allah say? What does the commentators say? The hasan of the dunya is a righteous, committed, loyal spouse. So the best of the world is marriage. The best kind of fuel in this world 
is a good, righteous, dedicated spouse. Right? The best kind of, the purest kind of joy is in marriage. ومن آياته marriage is a miracle. لتسكن إليها it's a home, it's سكينة, it's سكنة, it's سكون. It's supposed to be calming, tranquil, grounding, empowering. All of these add that Allah gives us. You know, هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن. You're a cover. You're there to cover each other, to protect each other, to cover the flaws, not to poke the buttons to manifest those flaws. Right? You get to know each other's weaknesses, so you work around those weaknesses, and you empower and you cover. You're a team together. المؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم من بعض بعضكم أولياء بعض من ذكر الأنثى بعضهم من بعض بعضكم من بعض خلقه من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها ليسكن إليها. So many of these آيات in the Quran that Allah سبحانه وتعالى reminds us we're a team where they're supposed to work together not against each other and Allah gave us the opportunity to experience مودة and رحمة from Him the ability to experience love and to express love in a way that is appreciated by the person that we love. And the ability to have rahmah, compassion in the way that we love. So we don't limit the person, we empower the person, encourage the person. All of these Allah talks about and all of these are blessings from Allah. Should we not take them for granted? Now what's amazing subhanAllah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks so much in these ayat about taqwa and how Allah will give the person of taqwa a way out. Allah will give you from where you least expect. Allah will be sufficient for you. In Allah Amrihi, Allah will allow you to reach your goal, to reach your desire. Allah will allow you to overcome. What happens, subhanAllah? Imagine spending 20, 30 years of your life with somebody and you become so independent, so interdependent. It's difficult to move on. It's really heartbreaking. You know, subhanAllah, especially when you've been in marriage for so long, you literally, like Imam Shafi says, like two, two rivers growing together, and at the beginning there's a little bit of turbulence, but then you become literally one. And then for whatever reason, you have to dissolve, you have to separate. It becomes very difficult. It becomes very emotionally difficult. And it takes a long time to recover. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the biggest kind of assurance to that. You know, imagine sometimes even we, like, um, you know, when, when, when in a young age, let's say you go through a haram relationship, and you go through the breakup, even if you've been together emotionally, for like three weeks, you're like, oh my God, my heart, I can't. You know, خلاص, you're distraught. I need to, you know, I need to go for therapy, and I'm not undermining that. But it's it's heartbreaking, even when it's at a young age, and it's uh, it's it, it's not, you know, it's very short as a duration. Can you imagine years of halal, building together, a family together, children together? It's very difficult. It's not easy. It's very difficult, and a lot of people stay in bad marriages simply because of convenience. Simply because of convenience. But it's important to ask yourself, is this a bad marriage? How do I assess that this is a bad marriage? Is it taking me away from Allah? Is it compromising my ethics? Is it compromising my relationship with Him, Allah? Is it compromising me physically? Or is it compromising me spiritually? These are the big ones, right? Is it an exploitative one? Am I enabling bad behavior? These are the questions that we ask. And if the answer is yes, then regardless of what's at stake, you need bravery and trust in Allah. Right? How do you trust somebody else more than you trust Allah? You trust somebody else who may not be the best in their relationship with Allah. Right? So it's good to invest. It's good to invest and invest. Invest. Don't give up easily. But after you've invested and you've tried for years and it's still not working out and the person is keen on not changing, and they're only becoming, they're only becoming more bold in their arrogance or their transgression, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all of these assurances. Allah will give you a way out. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for you. Allah will be enough for you. Allah will be enough for you to fill any gap, any craving, any hole, any, 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 any um, um, emptiness in, in, in your heart, in your life. Allah will fill it. Allah is enough to fill it. And Allah will give you from where you least expect. But then there's what? There's a time and a duration for everything. A time and a duration for everything. So after all these promises, Allah says there's a time and duration for everything. So you're, 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 you're meant to go through this emotional difficulty for six months, for a year. So you're going to go through it for six months or a year. And then good will happen after. But it's there for a specific duration to change something within you. right? To change something within you. And I've talked about this sometimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something that you're dependent on to teach you that you are actually more independent than you think. 
and to teach you to love Allah more than you love anybody else. And when you get to that level where you are distant enough from people directly, but you're close enough to people through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the balance and the relationship that we should have. And a lot of the, the solution in relationships comes to teach, to teach that. To teach us not to become interdependent on people, but to be truly, truly dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that grounding being in our lives that nothing and no one else takes place, takes that place. And once you learn that lesson, you'll find that you'll have better satisfaction in relationships. Better satisfaction in relationships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then reminds us, the ones who uh, have stopped uh, their menses, right? They have, um, uh, they're no longer getting their menses, then you wait three months. Imagine all of these things that Allah has given us, right? And we said the three, the waiting period is also to make sure that she's not pregnant, that you don't, you don't have a child. Because sometimes when there is a child in, 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 in the picture, it changes things. It changes things. And when we're talking about last week, the times that you're not allowed to divorce your wife or to dissolve, dissolve the relationship or to begin initiate divorce, among those times is when when what? When she's on her menses. We talked about that because, again, that's an emotional time, a difficult time. So don't add to that difficulty. And that's a time to kind of, you know, stay back and be easygoing, to be more malleable, to be more flexible. It doesn't mean that it is, it's, it's an emotional time always. It doesn't mean it's always for everyone. But it just means that Allah recognized that for some, at some times, it is important to, as a man, be more understanding and be more sensitive during these times. So imagine all of these rules that Allah has put in place. You cannot do three. It's not considered to be a talaq that is uh, sunni, a talaq that is bid'i. It's not, it's not liked in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sight of Rasulullah to do three divorces in one. Even though in some schools it counts as a final divorce, it is still not liked. It's still not liked, right? And the Sharia allows for a husband to divorce his wife when she's pregnant, but the waiting period is until she gives birth, as we'll see. And then even after that, as she's breastfeeding, he still has to support her. But the reason for that is if you have a relationship with your wife and you know that she's expecting, and still you're thinking about divorce, it means that is a major issue. So the Shara thinks and considers the Shara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has put these rules in place to make it easy to dissolve when it's necessary. And to make it not easy to dissolve when it's just an issue that can be fixed and can be rectified. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who've never had um, uh, those who've never had uh, any uh, cycle to begin with, then of course we know what the waiting period is for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all these uh, uh, these rules, three cycles as well. But for a woman who's pregnant, the waiting period, she has to wait in the house, in the, under the same roof, until she gives birth. Until she gives birth. So even if you divorce your wife, while she is pregnant, you're allowed to, but her waiting period is, is until when? Until she gives birth. So you, like a pregnant wife can't be on the street. There's no reason a Muslim woman who's pregnant would be on the street by herself, ever. Imagine the honor that is given. Like you, you don't see eye to eye. You don't see eye to eye. The marriage is not working, but she does not leave the house if she's pregnant under any circumstances. Unless we talked about like really vulgar, physical, or infidelity, right? But she does not leave the house. And Allah says what? لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن. They should not leave from their homes. Allah says it's their home. If she built this home with you, she put her time into the children with you. Yes, she may not have the name on paper. Yes, she may not be on the title, right? And we're not just talking about like Canadian law from an Islamic point of view. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is her home. Just like as it is your home, don't take that away from her. So imagine what that means. What that means and the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting in place to give women, and we're talking about a patriarchal society 1400 years this is transformative. This is completely revolutionary. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling these Muslim men and families to recognize the right of ownership for a woman. The right to leave a bad marriage. But the guidelines to do so. And the considerations and the questions to ask. This is also, subhanahu when you think about it, it's very, very transformative. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions 
This is the legislation of Allah. Anzalahu ilaykum. He's revealed it to you. ومن يتق الله يكفر عنه سيئاته سيئاته ويعظم له أجرا whoever has تقوى again تقوى 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 because when you're going through a divorce it's not it's no longer about rights it's no longer about rules it's no longer about law because you can easily mend the law and you can easily play with the law and you can easily drag each other to court and make each other's lives miserable so what is the word that keeps coming over and over and over and over again when we're talking about divorce Look how many times, guys, it's been mentioned. Right? وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions so, ذَلِكَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ uh, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ These are the boundaries. This is the command. This is the legislation. Where else in the Quran do you find this repetition about taqwa and about this is the command. This is from Allah. This is the legislation. So it goes to show you again, this is very, very, very important. And this is the time to manifest taqwa, to manifest ihsan, to manifest, to really protect your boundaries that Allah has set. Right? And Allah says, whoever implements this, Allah will forgive their sins, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the reward immense and intense. Now, here is the important transition that is made. Allah says in the second page, أَسْكِرُهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ سَكَنْتُمْ مِنْ وُجِدِكُمْ this is incredibly powerful. Allah says, let them live where you live according to your means. So you can't say, oh, you know what? Uh, okay, you know what? I, you go to the basement, I'll take the first floor. Or uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you another, you know, another apartment. It's like, you know, my, my apartment is 5000 here. You take another $500 apartment. No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, let them live where you live. Same means. Same means you cannot be oppressive during the waiting period. And if this is during the waiting period, by extension, during marriage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that you should treat your wife in what in the same way that you would treat yourself. It's very important. Some people, you know, in, in certain communities, we're expecting the guy, let's say he's making based on the means, right? Allah says based on the means. Min wujidikum. So if the guy is making 75,000, don't expect him to you know, uh, rent a house that is beyond his budget, beyond his means. And some people use marriage and sometimes use divorce as a way to, you know, exploit men, exploit financially other men, right? And it should not be the case on either side, on either way. And when she's staying in the house, do not do what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not harass them to make their stay unbearable. So yes, she's there. But you keep harassing. You keep saying, oh, why don't you take the garbage out? Oh, this passing comments, negative comments, emotional comments, bad comments here and there. None of that is allowed. None of that is allowed. Right? So you cannot make her stay unbearable that you do what? You do silent, right? Silently forcing her a forced eviction or a forced, um, you force her to basically say, I can't bear this and she has to go. So you have to treat her well even during the waiting period. Right? And some of the commentators would actually give stories of people that went through divorce from the early generation. And the husband, subhanAllah, would still make food for his, for his, you know, she's still his wife. They're divorced, but they're not fully divorced. He would still make food for her. He would still provide for her. She would still check on him. Are you okay? Are you doing okay? So even, even in these cases, there's still rahma and mawadda. You would, you can imagine you find somebody, subhanAllah, in the street that is not well. You would take care of them and they're a stranger. What about your own family, your own home? People that you shared an intimate connection with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us all of that. Because sometimes when we're emotionally loaded, it's difficult to rein in. But where you have wisdom is you have a conversation and say, you know what? I understand that we're not working out. I understand we have our differences. But you're the mother of my children. I will always care for you. Right? I will always be there for you. Subhanallah. And, I, and I, you hear stories right, in, in, in good communities. Stories in good communities. I know a husband and a wife that were divorced for years. She's been divorced, subhanAllah, for years. And she received news that she has, you know, she's, she's got cancer. And even though they've been divorced for years, she called him and saying, hey, can you please help me with this? I don't have the capacity to do so. He said, absolutely, whatever I have is yours. They haven't been together in years. But we shared that bond and whatever I can do, I will send. Right? She's not married, right? And she's alone for whatever reason. So he still continued to help. Of course, they're still not husband and wife, so there still need to be some boundaries, right? So he respects those boundaries, 
but it says whatever the costs are, here's the credit card information, charge it to my credit card. If, if you, if you, like, right? Versus the, I blocked her on Instagram and TikTok and I, I wrote, I wrote, you know, a whole post on Facebook the day of the divorce. Bad things happen and bad people come into our lives, but I don't want to be too explicit, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah's, you know, and all this emotional nonsense that you do, like you take a picture, you know, you're on the beach, like freedom, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, hashtag Allah's doors are opening, Alhamdulillah, and then she's out competing, deep inside they're both breaking, at night they're crying, but they try to put like a, you know, front, all this nonsense and bakwas. And then she posts a picture with all of her friends together, friends over, family over this, friends over, all this nonsense. Stop. So immature, so, you know, childish, but it happens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us again, وَلَا تَنْسَوا الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Don't forget the good that was shared between you. Give them from where you live, you know, and, and don't make their life unbearable during that time. وَإِن كُنَّ أُولَاتِ حَمْلٍ And if they are pregnant... فَأَنْفِقُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ حَتَّى يَضَعْنَ حَمْلَهُنَّ Then spend on them until they give birth. You can't expect your wife to be pregnant and also to be working at the same time, especially if you have the means. And even after getting a divorce, you're divorced, you're waiting the waiting period, but she has and she's carrying your child. What do you do as a man? You take care of her. Honey, you don't have to go anywhere. You stay where you are, right? And I'll make sure that you're taken care of. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ أَرْضَعْنَ لَكُمْ And if they, if they can breastfeed, if they, choose to pre, if they choose to breastfeed, because sometimes what happens, imagine you're going through a divorce, emotions are high, and that affects, psychologically affects the supply. So sometimes you may not be able to. As a mother, you, you don't have the capacity to give breast milk to your children. So Allah says, if she can, imagine the language that Allah is using. Allah is not forcing a woman to. Allah is not making her feel guilty. Because imagine you have your child. You feel guilty coming out of a marriage. You're like, did I mess up? Did I not mess up? And now your supply is low because it's affecting emotionally. And it does happen often. Ask women who had divorced during their pregnancy. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't add the extra stress. If she can, then do what? Then continue to support her during that time. Continue to give her. Not give your child. Your child, yeah, you have to still provide. That's a given. But you give her. For the time that she's breastfeeding your child, you still take care of her. So how long is a breastfeeding um, duration? Two years. Two years. So for the two years, and as long as she's breastfeeding, you continue to provide for her. Like, imagine. These are the rules of, and Allah says, these are the rules of Allah. Tilka hududullah. These are the boundaries set by Allah. Like the, 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 uh, the amount of respect that is given and what that teaches a man, the way that he should perceive and take care of his wife and look at his wife, it changes, or his ex-wife, it changes when you read these ayat. Allah is directing us to reconsider the way that we see each other in and after marriage. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن أَرْضَعَنْ لَكُمْ فَأَتُهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ وَأْتَمِرُوا بَيْنَكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفِ Right? What is this? وَأْتَمِرُوا بَيْنَكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفِ What does that, what does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make sure that you're consulting each other in that which is good. Consult each other in a way that is good. Because what happens when you go through a divorce? I'm the one providing for you, not even working. I have full decision making. I decide. I decide if our baby is going to do it. I decide when we're going to sleep train our baby. I decide when the baby is going to... I decide all of that. Or she says, you're not even here anymore. You're not even around. I decide. Allah says, no. Pull your egos down and do what's best for the child. And work together. And communicate together. And if you're not able to, if something happens and you cannot breastfeed your child... فَسَتُرْضِعُ لَهُ أُخْرَى Someone else who can, should breastfeed the child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing, emphasizing breastfeeding the child, breastfeeding the child, breastfeeding the child. Why is breastfeeding so important in Islam? Why is Allah emphasizing that? You look at the research. One of the greatest, you know, uh, there's a Professor Schellenberg, he was at UTM for some time. He's, gradu his, uh, 
He's retired now. He was a professor who was uh, looking into intelligence. I believe he's in Portugal somewhere now uh, doing some research there. And he says one of the uh, one of the most obvious indicators of intelligence intelligence is how long a baby is breastfed. That is one of the things that has direct bearing, clear based on the numbers, in terms of intelligence. Some of you who did not get breastfed a full term, you're like, oh, that explains it. No, it's not, right? Allah, Allah, you know, these things do work out in the long term. But, but, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding. And it's very important for the, for the emotional well-being of the child, for the psychological well-being of the child. Just go home tonight and look up at the predictors of breastfeeding. And how it's important for the child's psychological well-being, how it's important for the for, for the intellectual well-being of the child. So Allah is making it very clear: if the mother cannot do it for whatever reason, that's okay. Get someone else too. Get and 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 Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is emphasizing: yes, donor banks or this and, and and all of that. And uh, formula is good, but what breastfeeding, the act of holding the child, and the act of skin to skin, act of being in that space, is what Allah is emphasizing us to do. And you look at the research, subhanAllah, and what the research says. Like Allah is giving us so much, so many guidelines, so many wisdoms that we should really, really uh, look at closely. Then Allah says, min sa'atihi. The one that Allah has given abundance should be abundant when they spend on their family. If Allah gave you the means, be generous. The best dollar, the best dinar is the one that you spend on your family. So don't restrict. Like imagine some guys, subhanAllah, they'll buy like a car for $50,000 and then when it comes to their wife, they'll give something, you know, here is... No, you, you show your generosity to your family, to your wife. That's what Allah is saying. If Allah is giving you the means, yes, take care of her. Spend on your wife. Make sure that she's well, well uh, taken care of. وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا أَتَاهُ اللَّهِ and the one whose risk, whose provisions financially is restricted, then spend from what Allah has given you. Maybe you don't have time. Or maybe you don't have money, but spend from your time. Maybe you don't have money, but you can, t you can be more present in elsewhere. The risk is not just money. So find whatever Allah has given you and give that to your wife. Give that to your wife. Find ways to show your love and to express that love in other ways. And whatever Allah has given you, give from that. Then Allah, and, and what's amazing is subhanAllah, yeah, and this ayah, even though it's talking about within the divorce period, it applies anywhere else. وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ Sometimes when your risk is limited, what should you do? Still give back from where Allah has given you. It's a general rule to live by, not just only within divorce, but a general rule. When your risk is limited, that is when you give more based on capacity. Maybe I'm not making money, but I have time. I'll volunteer my time to the community. I'll help out to the best of my capacity. Then Allah gives us again another beautiful rule to live by. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها سيجعل الله بعد عسر يسرا. Allah does not expect more of you than what you are able to do and to give, and Allah will make after difficulty ease. After difficulty, there will come ease, and that's another promise. Then Allah, there's a new transition here. وَكَأَيَّ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ عَتَتْ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهَا وَرُسُلِهِ فَحَاسَبَنَاهَا حِسَابًا شَدِيدًا وَعَذَّبَنَاهَا عَذَابًا نُكْرًا فَذَاقَتْ وَبَالَ أَمْرِهَا وَكَانَ عَاقِبَةُ أَمْرِهَا خُسْرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us and how many societies rebelled against the commandments of Allah and His messengers. So we held that society, we took account of that society to severe punishment and we subjected them to a horrible torment or humiliation. Why? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about a society being punished? Because they break the rules of Allah. Because divorce is, again, there are restrictions that Allah has given. And if you don't hold these restrictions and abide by them, what Allah is saying is that will lead to social decay. And a social decay can be one of the ways that Allah punishes a society. What happens, subhanAllah, when we start stigmatizing marriage or stigmatizing divorce and we start saying, I don't care, the shara says this, but no, I'm not going to live under the same roof after divorce. What is that? That's so weird. Doesn't make sense. That's not what my culture says. I got to go talk to my parents right now. I can't keep this to myself. I'm going to talk, talk to my friends. They, you know, they were here before you ever were and they will continue to be here after you. So I'm done with this. None of that. No. You respect the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set 
And otherwise, there will be social consequences. There will be punishments that we see around us. And look, subhanAllah, at so many, so many of us, unfortunately, nowadays, we lack that patience and self-restraint. And there's a lot of emotional immaturity. So people get very, very angry quickly, and they're not able to invest long-term in the marriage. You know, that calm. You know, we grew up around grandparents. They had nerves of steel. They had such calm, collected demeanors. Things would be, uh, Ammi, alhamdulillah, sit down, relax, patience, patience. And they would diffuse. You know, some people, mashallah, the older generation diffuse, diffuse the tension. Keep the calm, keep collected. Now, the smallest little thing, there's a fire. Khalas, Allah, And some people, mashallah, they're Abu Lahab. You know, flames here and here. They're carrying flames in their hand. You get them involved, they will just, mashallah. Right? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, hold these rules. Hold yourselves accountable to these rules because otherwise there will be social consequences. And what happens? They tasted the evil consequences of their doings. And what is the consequence? Loss. Loss. Because who suffers? Who suffers in the end? The children. Who suffers in the end? Right? The, the families. Reputation, people become, become triggered, people become vulnerable, or people uh, don't want to be vulnerable. Oh, you know, I don't want to get married, divorce rates are so high, this is, uh, it's crazy, women are, you know, this and men are that, and there's a lot of distrust in the community, and then already you're primed, so you're looking for reasons, you know, uh, 7,001 reasons people get divorced, you read that book, then you get into the marriage, everything, like, oh my God, that's reason number 263, that's reason number 294, you've already primed yourself. Right? And, and people become, be, be, begin to be very heightened. Sometimes you need to what? You need to put trust in Allah. You need to calm down and invest the person and can invest in the person and contain the person and work with the person and be an emotional coach, a physical coach. Like, I'm going to coach you. We, we're going to get through this together. And sometimes you need to have wisdom to know what to say, what not to say, when to be vulnerable, how much to be vulnerable, not to bear or to put so much stress on a person, right? Like subhanAllah, sometimes like guys, guys, you've had, mashallah, tabarakallah, a life tough, 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 tough. And now you're married and you just, you vent to your wife and you vent emotionally and then you have her Instead of being, you know, a supportive wife and you expect that to, to be her role, you expect it to be a therapist as well. You expect it to solve your problem, solve your childhood this and childhood. No. So you have to have the wisdom to know how much can the person that I'm dealing with handle? And how much can my husband handle, right? Some things are better to stay with you and some struggles are better to stay with you and to find support elsewhere. That's wisdom. and. And sometimes we don't receive the training or the support to know that. And that's why it's important to ask, to get clarification, to, you know, uh, especially the, 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 the uh, established wisdom of the community. You know, when go, go talk to your uncle, go talk to your grandfather, go talk to your grandparents, ask them, how did you do things? How did you manage things? Because there are established wisdoms that can really help us as communities and Sunan that can really help us um, avoid a lot of these issues. أعد الله لهم عذابا شديدا فاتقوا الله يا أولي الألباب الذين آمنوا قد أنزل الله إليكم ذكرا الله سبحانه وتعالى prepared a severe punishment for them so have taqwa of Allah O people of intellect as believers قد أنزل الله إليكم ذكرا this is another reminder that Allah has given you can you imagine how many times Allah is saying taqwa a remembrance a reminder a reminder a reminder who is this reminder that Allah has sent رسولا يتلو عليكم آيات الله a messenger that recites the signs of Allah, the ayat. Mubayinat, they clarify matters of confusion. To take the believers out of darknesses into light. And whoever believes in Allah and does righteous deeds, Whoever has belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does righteous deeds, Allah will give them jannat, paradises, gardens, rivers flow underneath. They live there forever. They reside there permanently, eternally. So maybe you're never going to get married again. Maybe you're not going to do well financially. 
Or what risk does Allah offer? Maybe it's a test that will stay for some time. But if the risk is delayed in this dunya for whatever reason, Allah promises the best risk in the akhirah. Maybe if you do get married to somebody else, your children might not turn out to be great. Maybe Allah meant for you to focus on your children. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away wealth so that you learn to depend on Him. And Allah is teaching some lessons. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the if, if for whatever reason things are still not working out and you still don't have the financial capacity or the means that you wished for, right? Recalibrate and understand. Do your best. Do your best to knock on the doors. But if Allah keeps shutting those doors in your path, Maybe there's a reason and a hikmah for it. So look where Allah is sending you and try to understand there's other form. There are other forms of risk that he's given you. But look at the way that the surah ends. With assurance. It is he, Allah, alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawat. He created seven heavens, seven different layers. We know as Muslims, we believe the observable universe is only layer one. So beyond the observable universe, the non-observable universe is... There are six other entities, six layers out there, six forms of existence that are beyond our capacity to see. And from the earths, from like where we live, from the planets like earth, multiple, multiple levels as well. Just like that. So there's so many out there entities, other earths, other you know entities like us. What that means? Allahu alam. Could there be other civilizations? Some ulama use this ayat to say perhaps. But Allah is saying there's so much out there and Allah has created so much. And like your earth, Allah has created multiple levels and multiple other beings. And Allah's command perpetually fluctuates across all of this. Allah is fully commanding all of these entities. And Allah is telling you this. So you know that Allah is over all things capable. وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما أن الله is fully aware. So you think you're making dua, يا الله, give me that you know hundred thousand dollars. You think the hundred thousand dollars is anything for Allah? He created seven heavens and seven entities, existence beyond. Look at the stars. Look at the moon. That that's nothing. Nothing in compare. Nothing is impossible for Allah to do. Billions, trillions of dollars, not impossible for Allah. وما ذلك على الله بعزيز Nothing that you ask for will be greater than Allah's capacity to give. So be what Allah is reminding you. Be, be generous on yourself by asking Allah for more. By believing that Allah can take care of you. By believing that Allah can give you better. By believing that Allah can open doors for you. Don't underestimate Allah's capacity to give. But at the same time, when you're going through hardship, don't think to yourself, Hey, Allah is not giving me because maybe He cannot give. Or Allah does not exist. Don't let that lead to a crisis of faith because what? وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا Allah is fully aware so perhaps what you're asking for is not good for you. So Allah holds it back because you think you need it, you think you want it, but Allah knows that it will be what? Damaging to you. And maybe Allah will make you wait until you're ready for it and then Allah will give it to you. And when you do get it, it'll be at a time in which you've matured enough to realize Alhamdulillah, I didn't get earlier. And you're excited enough to Pursue better and excellent behavior that you're able to manage it well. And the timing will always be ready and will always be perfect when you have that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you realize it later on. Ah, subhanAllah, that's why. And as it's happening to you, as it unfolds, you will yourself realize the hikmah of Allah, hikmatun baligha. The wisdom of Allah is immense. It's baligha. It, it, it reaches. It, it echoes. It's, it's always what? It's always... Uh, when you come to realize it, subhanAllah, Allah did the right thing in the right way at the right time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn from this, Ya Rabb, I mean how to be good towards each other, how to be better towards each other. And imagine all of these rules, as I said, they take the community, the Muslim community, from being like a patriarchal society in the sense to becoming what? To becoming a balanced Islamic community. Right? The Islamic community is not patriarchal, nor is it matriarchal. It's what it's balanced. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. Do not let men think, oh, I want what women have, and men chase what women have, and women chase what men have. No. Allah has given each different responsibilities, different privileges, different 
also capacities. So we work together, not against each other. We're compatriots, companions. Um, we are there to compete together, to bring the best out of each other. And we're there to complete and cooperate and complement, not to chase what we don't have, but to focus on what we have and to channel what Allah has given us and to give that in order to fulfill ourselves and to fulfill the roles that Allah has given us. Jazakumullah khair for your attention. We have five minutes, inshallah, to Isha. So inshallah, we'll get ready for Salat al-Isha. Next week, there is an event happening at the masjid. So we will not have Quran journey, but we will have it inshallah the week after. So please check the WhatsApp group. There is no class next week. There's another event happening, which is great. Inshallah, I encourage you all to attend. But we'll have class again the week after that. And I will announce the surah that we're studying. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhad an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhad an la ilaha illa أشهد أن محمد رسول الله There's a dua request for Brother Zubair Subani. He is in the hospital. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him full shifa, Ya Rabbi Ameen.
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيموا تراصوا اعتدلوا سدوا الخلل اتصلوا ولا تختلفوا straighten the line leave no gaps feet and shoulders aligned stay connected not divided الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Amen. أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقُّ كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِيثَاقَ وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةَ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقْبَى جنات عدن يدخلونها ومن صلح من آبائهم وأزواجهم وذرياتهم والملائكة يدخلون عليهم كل باب سلام عليكم بما صبرتم سلام عليكم بما صبرتم فنعم عقب الدار الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك أولئك لهم اللعنة ولهم سوء الدار الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر وفرحوا بالحياة الدنيا وما الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا متاع ويقول الذين كفروا لولا أنزل عليه آية من ربه قل إن الله يضل من يشاء ويهدي إليه من أناب الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات طوبى لهم طوبى لهم وحسن مآب سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر
Wow. سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. I know some of you had uh, questions today and uh, we needed to do a Q&A, but uh, because of the time, we could not uh, do it uh, tonight. So inshallah, what we'll do is um, we'll dedicate inshallah a portion of the next class before we start for Q&A inshallah. Any questions that you have related to uh, the surah, we'll take them up inshallah. And if they are pressing and you don't want to wait until the next class, you can just send them, inshallah, through the uh, WhatsApp, just uh, on the group, or a private message, and we'll get to them, inshallah, as soon as possible. Please do be patient, because there is a high, um, of course, load of uh, messages that are coming in. Sometimes we get close to 200, 300 messages per day. So if you don't respond, please just remind us, and we'll do the best to get back to it, inshallah, as soon as possible. As-salamu alaykum. 